Mm-hmm. True. The other thing about these social issues is, or where we need to be careful with the social issues is that while we're trying to help someone or help somebody or try to solve a problem, it might actually be creating another problem instead, right? So do you have any examples in mind right now of something like that that happened with you? Yes, that's a very, very good question. And it was something that just came to mind was um, when we first started Seven Women, there were mm-hmm. some women that came to the centre you know, at, at the very early stages mm-hmm. and some women just coming once those women had been trained and they were earning money now, uh, new women were coming for training and these new women had very, very little money, sometimes no money, mm-hmm. and they had children that weren't going to school because they didn't have enough money to afford the scholarships. So what we thought would be a good idea, me and the, the team, like mm-hmm. the board, thought, maybe we can give the women who have just come scholarships for their children. We can start a scholarship fund. Mm-hmm. Um, so we thought that we were helping and assisting these new women to have opportunity to send their kids to school, but actually it did create another problem, which was mm-hmm. the women that started with us. Some of them mm-hmm. said, hang on, but what about my kids? Like they're getting scholarships. What about my children? But in our minds, it was, mm-hmm. well, they're earning enough money now to pay for their own children's school fees so we're actually giving scholarships to the new women that can't afford it yet but it did create that um a little bit of a dynamic between the women that was not what we wanted to create mm-hmm. you know we wanted everyone to support each other so yeah it was a very interesting learning and then mm-hmm. after that we just really worked hard to um get the women trained into a stage where they could earn their own money so mm-hmm. they could pay for family's needs you know so we could pay them a good wage and they would be able to manage that themselves mm-hmm. absolutely absolutely and that's what i've learned so far about the social issues too like it's not about giving them you know relief for a single day it's about like somehow it's basically the old phrase of don't give a man a fish but teach a man how to fish right it's basically that concept and i think yeah. this all somehow the way i can see it like how we can deal with these things is where it comes in social entrepreneurship it's like a part of social innovation and social innovation is a very broad topic in itself as what i've studied and social entrepreneurship is just a part right and where i see is social entrepreneurship could be the way to you know to make the business itself sustainable and to also solve issues at the same time So what's your experience around social entrepreneurship and why do you think would we need it more in future? Um, well, I think social entrepreneurship is a term for someone who has an idea, a business mm-hmm. idea that generates income and the, there's a social cause, like there's a goal for the business that's greater than oneself, greater mm-hmm. than just I want to earn money. And I think all businesses... are uh, needing to think like that these days because mm-hmm. the world needs it and i think you know if you're if you're just in it for yourself that doesn't really lead to um fulfillment i think mm-hmm. people are looking for more fulfillment these days so um yeah social entrepreneurship is just a fancy word for uh someone who has an idea and wants to start a business and mm-hmm. social enterprise is a fancy term for the businesses that have you know that that support people in the business and that mm-hmm. maybe um have positive impacts on on the customers or on the people working in the business mm-hmm. so um but it's it can be a lot more challenging to start a business like that the traditional mm-hmm. business model can be more easier because you can buy products that are already made for mm-hmm. you know wholesale price and just sell them so all you have to focus on is um just you know getting the products and selling them to the market mm-hmm. when you're doing a social enterprise it involves a lot more mhm but do you think it is a way to look forward or to you know like to develop because i had this idea you know like when i was studying social innovation which was basically going to like every village and finding what people are skilled at or what skill do they have or what are the basic skills we can teach them and form a social entrepreneurship around that in that village and do the same process in the next village and so on. And I think you're already doing that with seven women and our hands-on development tours. 
right? And cooking classes too. Maybe give us yeah. a little bit of more information around that. You know, like your hands-on development tools. Sure. So, um, so we started with the manufacturing business in Nepal, and that kind of mm -hmm. grew as more women came to be employed. And I started wholesaling the products to with my with a team of volunteers. There's about 50 volunteers here mm -hmm. who sold the products wholesale to about 200 shops around Australia, and then mm -hmm. we started selling to. Europe and exporting directly from Nepal. Mm -hmm. So after about six years of that business, we thought, um, I mean, we're still doing it now, but we thought what's another skill that we can make available to the women because not mm -hmm. all of the women are interested in making products. So we thought maybe we can do um, exactly what you were just saying, like mm -hmm. the skill, let's look at the skills of the women that are coming to our centre. Mm -hmm. Yes, some of them already can knit and, and we provide training for that. But what about we, women know how to cook as well? So mm -hmm. why don't we start cooking classes and they can share their Nepalese culture to tourists that come to Nepal to learn about the culture. Mm -hmm. So we started that in our centre and we had two small kitchens and the groups loved it. So we partnered with a few tour companies and they became bigger and bigger and it, too, too big for our kitchen. Mm -hmm. So then we raised money to build a there was like a chicken pen out the back, like a mm -hmm. shed. And mm -hmm. we maybe we can renovate that into a kitchen. So we did that and it could host, you know, up to 25 people in the class. And mm -hmm. we had about 150 people some days at the center learning about our work, but also doing the cooking classes. And when they did the cooking classes, you know, sometimes they'd buy the products from our mm -hmm. shop. So it was a really, a really awesome little, enterprise and the goal for us was to become sustainable in nepal so mm -hmm. they would generate enough money in nepal to sustain themselves and they wouldn't be reliant on me fundraising in mm -hmm. australia for you know the rest of my life so um yeah so that was really really good and it was actually on track to be 100 percent sustainable mm -hmm. just in 2019 um so now we've had to adapt and change a lot because mm -hmm. overnight the stopped mm -hmm. so uh so and we, we actually we had just launched our guest house in okay. Kathmandu mm -hmm. time so we uh paid rent on this building that was like an empty shell and mm -hmm. we renovated it and it's got eight rooms and it's in uh Lazimpat mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah that's right also, Lazimpat yeah, so um, we've made a cafe too and a little cafe garden uh, uh -huh. for that. So that that's kind of the third social enterprise. And then the fourth is what you mentioned before, which was my tours. So I had a tour mm -hmm. company where I was taking high school students and university students and uh, people from organisations like Rotary across to Nepal and leadership mm -hmm. organisations to do 10-day cultural immersions mm -hmm. and was employing our staff in Nepal to facilitate those tours. Mm -hmm. So um, I love your idea. I love how you had that idea to go to the villages and see what the skills were of the people because mm -hmm. that's a great starting point where you can create from there. Mm 